Hello and welcome to, well, my little corner of the internet and today we need to talk. This was not the video I had planned today, but there are some dark conversations running around girl world regarding religion, race, predatory behavior that I feel even though I'm a tiny little creator, it's still my obligation to speak up on because it's, well, seriously getting to me. I don't care about personal beef anyone has with other reactors or creators. I have people I do and don't like. You have people you do and don't like. I have people that I like that have recently rubbed me the wrong way and I pushed back, but not enough in my opinion. Feeling a bit blindsided, walking away, feeling kind of icky, and haven't returned because it just felt too weird, but we'll get into that. I have people I can't stand that I have recently had to fully agree with, which is not my favorite moment, let's be real, but I have my boundaries, and they're pretty common boundaries, I thought, until recently. It's been, I don't know, just a different kind of dark toxic lately. So, because I have a platform, small or not, depending on your perspective, I think it's important we have a talk about this. Do we even need to say racial slurs aren't okay? Recently, there's been a lot of talk that a creator liked to comment with a racial slur containing the hard R directed at another very disliked creator Yo Mama. There was initially silence and a deleted channel, but Shannon brought their channel back and apologized saying they didn't read the comment and it was just liking comments blindly. Okay, good on the apology, but the excuse just doesn't sit right. I just don't buy it. I have accidentally liked a comment, didn't intend to, and from the slip of a finger and I unclicked it. I personally don't blindly just like comments. So unless it was buried in like a commentary novella, it screams disingenuous. And even if it was, that level of irresponsibility is kind of mind-blowing. Imagine if Chantal or Amberlynn had done that. Vanished and came back with oops, but okay, mistakes happen. It's not the end of the world. But even after all that, there was still a racist comment that was left in until the person that was targeted, Yo Mama, called it out during his live stream and only then was it deleted. To be fair, terrible comments will be left. Sometimes it's just going to happen and you have to address it appropriately. But if you just had an issue with your interaction with a racist comment and you pulled your channel over it, it seems like you'd come through and make sure the racist comments were gone. Time will tell if this is an isolated incident, I suppose, but the apologetics surrounding the situation, in my opinion, is almost as bad as the situation itself. Even if someone you like does something fucked up, you can still like them and make it clear that that kind of BS is not okay. In fact, those are the best people to do it. In the beginning, when I learned about it, I was told that it was in the form of a sentence, and at first I was like, okay, I guess I can see that, but I just went through five days of comments, and the more I reflected, the more I don't see it. It just isn't an issue to scan through the comments and know what it says, especially something like that that just jumps out at you. I've ignored a comment for far less, and that's that would have been a delete and block on my end. Well, why do I bring this up? Well, because some people can get so caught up in their dislike and hatred, whatever you want to call it, that those people start to overlook some pretty heinous behavior as long as it's targeted at someone they don't like. Behavior that most of us as a society generally agree is wrong, whether or not they would normally subscribe to that mindset outside of girl worlds, and honestly, it's a dangerous game to play, especially when you take into consideration that there are good and bad people on the internet, and those bad people can take that hateful rhetoric and let it fester into something dangerous and find justification in causing harm over it simply because they were in a community that condoned it. So as a society, especially if you have a platform of any size and you see this happening, you have a responsibility to speak out. There are certain things we come into this world with that we cannot choose. We don't choose the color of our skin, we don't choose our sexual preferences, and we don't choose our gender. Coming after someone for these intrinsic traits or any intrinsic trait is disgusting behavior and we shouldn't tolerate it from ourselves or those around us even if it's targeted at someone you don't like by someone you do. And this brings us to religion. Now, religion is a strange topic because it is a choice, but it can also be deeply rooted in culture and being raised in it isn't always a choice. So to me, it's a bit more complicated. It is no secret that I don't subscribe to any religion. I don't understand it. I spent a huge chunk of my life desperately trying to believe in God, and I was told I just wasn't trying hard enough by some, being told that it's blind faith, which to me seems wholly irresponsible, and I was told I just have to let go of what I'm still not sure. I'd have let go of anything if I knew how. Like, you have no idea how badly I wanted to believe in God and be part of a loving community, but I couldn't. And the history of religion and the basis of religion still makes no sense to me. I found a lot of cherry picking and contradiction that I just couldn't reconcile with. So as I'm addressing this topic, I feel it's important that you know this about me during this conversation as my inability to understand how someone can believe in God and any of this religion is beyond my capabilities. But unless you're using
using your faith as a shield to justify horrific behavior. It doesn't affect me in any way, and I'm not going to knock someone just because they believe in something I don't understand. Most of my friends and family whom I love dearly are religious in one way or another. So obviously, we're going to touch on the FFG adding ham to a religious holiday. The salad thing and the merry ham thing, it's just not a race or religious thing. It's just elementary school name calling, and I really don't care if you want to go elementary or not. I've been pretty petty myself. It's a nothing burger. And I feel like we need to understand that there's a line between clowning and legitimate harmful behavior. That being said, I can see where some people can get upset at the Ramadan thing because though FFG has been adding ham to everything regarding Chantal since the crack at Olympics, long before Pius Merriam knew what the Muslim religion even was, due to Chantal's strange love of the ham color for so long, having a deeply sacred religious holiday referred to in a way Muslims might consider unclean can be upsetting. Is it Islamophobic? No. I really wouldn't go that far. There's no reason to water down that definition, but I can see where it can be deeply disrespectful to Muslims. And I can understand those who feel a bit like it's a slap in the face, and I wish FFG would take that into consideration just out of respect for her audience and other Muslims. Because though it may not be Islamophobic, there is an understandable, likely painful nuance there if you're a Muslim and a fan of FFG. It's just really insensitive to make other people uncomfortable and feel mocked just because you're mocking one degenerate. I mean, I do feel weird when I hear it, and some people are okay with it, some aren't, but there's nothing rooted in racism or Islamophobia with that term. There are some other accusations out there regarding Charlie Gold, but I personally haven't heard it and I couldn't find it in a timely manner, so I can't really speak on it, but I will say this. In America, there is a stigma that black people are all on welfare, which isn't true, but it's a stereotype and as an American, I would 100% see it as racist if someone were to use it as an attack on a black person. I'm white, so I can only speak for myself and there are those who would say that I don't have the right to that opinion because I'm not black, but until the stigma is erased, that's going to be a no-go for me. If we're being honest here, making fun of anyone for needing assistance in this economy is just kind of out of touch with reality. But I don't see Bigot when I see FFG, though I do think she can get lost in the mess. Which leads me to Chantal, where it's pretty black and white in my opinion. She's not only told a Jewish person to go react to the Holocaust, but she did the Hitler salute back in Crackhead Olympics, and I know Chantal can barely manage to rub two brain cells together, but she knew it was anti-Semitic. Y'all over here making me side with Yo Mama, who said he learned it in the 8th grade and I learned it in the ninth. that goblin was an anti-Semitic term used to dehumanize Jews back in World War II through propaganda. It has roots in early Christianity and just because the term goblin originated as one thing doesn't mean it can't be adopted to create fear and hateful propaganda towards a group of people because that's exactly what happened. We've already established that I just don't really care about religion or gods and these religious wars are absolutely baffling to me, but I do care about what happens when we make it okay to demonize a group of people over a deep cultural value just because we dislike one person. Much like racism, when you have influence, it can breed dangerous things in the minds of mentally unstable people who can take that hateful notion and run with it if they feel like they're justified in their bigotry through a community of people condoning it. The reason this is such a big deal to me, frankly, is because of the Holocaust. Because this harkens back to a time when millions of innocent people were destroyed by something as simple as religion and culture. I'm not a trigger warning kind of person, so when I say trigger warning, it's legit. If you're sensitive to talk about harm against children, you may want to skip forward a couple of minutes. Let me tell you, man, when I was learning about all this in the ninth grade, it felt so far away, like ancient history, and I said as much to my teacher. At the time, I lived in a boarding school style group home, and the next thing I know, we're off to a trip to the Holocaust Museum in Los Angeles because my teacher mentioned it to a staff member who was Jewish and thought we needed a reality check, and well, they were right. That museum will change you. It changed me, on the spot. I walked into that museum lackadaisical about what humans were capable of doing to other humans and walked out shell-shocked. I saw images and heard stories that felt like they came straight out of a horror novel. I saw images of lines leading to a gas chamber full of people who looked like skeletons and images of piles of dead people being tossed into a mass grave by their own captive brethren, while soldiers stood there with guns watching. I saw images of things you wouldn't find on Google because they're just too horrific that cut me to the core, of families being ripped apart and children screaming in fear, reaching for their parents. But there was a room at the end of the tour that they said was viewer discretion advised, that there were images of horror that we would not be able to erase from our minds. And I couldn't imagine seeing anything worse than what I had already seen, so I went in. And on the one hand, I regret it because they were right. Those images are so burned into my brain, I could just as easily be standing in front of those giant black and white photos right now. Last warning, because what I'm about to describe to you is disturbing on a level that is hard to fathom. The 
were images of hundreds, maybe thousands of babies, infants, tiny little innocent people piled up like trash. Multiple piles as tall as the men standing there with pitchforks tossing these tiny babies, barely out of their mother's womb, into a truck. Like they were worth less than a bale of hay. Not because of a plague, not because of any disease outside of our control, but because a man decided to garner power by dehumanizing a group of people he didn't like, by calling them goblins, by telling people they weren't human, that they were here to steal, kill, and destroy, and must be eliminated through brainwashing and propaganda. And it perpetuated because not enough people stood up and said, no, this is crazy. It's really not difficult to find this information on Google once you scroll past the J.K. Rowling controversy, though you probably won't find the type of images I saw in that museum. Chantal said that the term goblin isn't bad unless you use it against someone in that way, which is absolutely true, and after what happened in World War II, because of the stigma over the centuries giving it credibility, using it against a Jewish person is heinous, and I really don't care how you spin it. While we're on the subject of J.K. Rowling, it seems strange to me that Miss Ignorant Pious Miriam just so happened to start using that term in the heat of the J.K. Rowling controversy. It seems to me that even before she was told in her chat that it was anti-Semitic ages ago, long before Yo Mama said anything, Chantal likely knew exactly what she was saying. Her recent justifications fall completely flat in my opinion. It is a big deal because unlike a fat joke or criticism on nutty behavior, it is actually dehumanizing and has been used in order to slaughter millions of innocent people. It can be argued that calling someone an animal is also dehumanizing and it is. It's an insult to call someone a dog or a pig, etc because of its dehumanizing nature, and it's certainly petty, but it's just not the same. Because these aren't terms that were used to oppress, torture, and murder an entire group of people just because of an intrinsic value they had no control over, like the n-word and the hard r. It's not simply because it's a disliked term. It's because it's linked to actual horrific actions inflicted on black people for generations. Just like if I call my kids little monkeys, crawling all over me in the furniture, it's a term of endearment. If I use it to describe a black man, it's disgusting and racist, because of its historical use to dehumanizing and to do actual harm to an entire demographic of people. When we take out the nuance, the reality, the history, and just say everything is racist, this phobic, that phobic, we're watering down the meaning of those words and the destructive value they still hold to this day. It's important to have a line drawn, boundaries you don't cross, even if you're trying to win some stupid YouTube argument because it's rooted in actual harm. And this is going to bring me to my final two semi-related topics darkening our community and adjacent communities communities, false allegations, and predatory behavior. It's incredibly wrong and legitimately harmful to falsely accuse someone of sexual misconduct of any kind for a couple of reasons. An accusation like that can follow someone, and if it's legitimate, it absolutely should. But the damage it can cause to the innocent person who was falsely accused can affect their life on every level, from a public optics level all the way down to simply trying to get a job or have a relationship, especially if that accusation itself is public. Not only that, it can harm actual victims because false accusations can make it that much harder for a victim to be believed since it's a difficult offense to prove. It's a disgusting abuse of power by the demented people who do it. That's not exactly a new stance here as we discussed this with the Amberlynn Casey situation and the video saga where I said I do certainly understand why it's uncomfortable, weird, and inappropriate to be secretly filmed and fat shamed, but to try to make it into a woman's safety issue and not a public figure issue is pretty disingenuous, especially with her false accusations against Casey never being resolved. I have boys and it's a fear of mine that they will run into the wrong woman who will one day get mad at rejection or something and they get falsely accused of an offense that can hurt them even though they're innocent, just like it's an even bigger fear of moms with daughters that some sick dude and statistically these crimes are heavily dominated by men will assault their daughter in unspeakable ways. But recently it's been debated whether or not Chantal was a victim or a perpetrator when she was taken advantage of by a 40 year old man at the age of 16. There were age of consent stipulations. Was it legal? Was it not? Which did not sit well with me at all when I was in Skinny Queen's live stream and I like her which makes it all the more important that I say something. And the more I thought about it I wished I'd pushed back a little more. I think she got caught up in that weird feeling people get when Chantal is involved because it's hard to see her as innocent in anything, but it just doesn't make it okay. What's even worse is there was a fucking disgusting disgusting argument by someone I don't even know saying girls that age can be manipulative and seductive and that's the moment I said fuck this we need to talk and this video happened because things have just gone 
way too far. So let me tell you right now where I stand on this. A child, no matter what, is never at fault for being intimately taken advantage of by a grown-ass adult man or woman. They are not at fault for being taken advantage of for any reason. And shame on Chantal's parents for not protecting her to the point where she, in her 30s, still didn't see anything wrong with the situation. Frankly, I'd have a problem with it if she were 18. That kind of power imbalance is disgusting. I know Chantal has apologized for predators. I know Chantal has said some heinous things herself. And we already know I think she's one of the worst kind of people out there. And it was absolutely awful for her to turn it into some sick romance story, calling it her French lover. Literally just all around wrong on so many levels. But I already make videos calling her out on all her BS, though this particular story had missed my radar until recently. It really changes nothing, but it's disgusting to put that abuse on the shoulders of any child, no matter who they grow up to be. So this is for all those that I don't make videos on, who have the audacity to call out Chantal for this kind of behavior and still sits here and justifies this horrific thing that happened to her when she was just a child. You can hate Chantal and still know it's fucking wrong that she was in that situation, or a full-grown sicko saw that girl that was clearly too young, even if she did lie about her age, and took advantage that shit is predatory behavior of the sickest kind and it was wrong for him to do that to Chantal when she was a child. Period. There is literally no caveat, no excuse, no reason, nothing. Chantal was a victim of that man, and that's quite literally all there is to it. I don't care what she's done now. They're wholly separate issues, and I will die on that hill. And if you're justifying what happened to her because of who she is now, you might want to take a deep look into your soul. As for all these issues of making fun of fat people, it's petty, but it's a changeable issue, and a grade school nonsense issue with that. It's not that deep. Sure, it's insulting, but it's not an intrinsic value. You're literally choosing to be fat. If you're fully aware of a mental health issue and refuse to do anything about it, that's a whole last choice. While we're on the subject, I'm not going to pretend that I'm not watching these people literally take themselves off of this earth with a quickness because of the choices they're making. It may be dark humor, but it's a reality that people cope with through humor. But there's a big difference between saying someone is doing something that will put them into an early grave and have some dark humor with it and literally telling someone to remove their existence or express hope that their existence be removed from this earth. That that is, in my opinion, incredibly disturbing and going way too far. As with everything, however, there is nuance because I will always wish the Grim Reaper on the predatory monsters who commit horrific acts on other people by either maliciously taking a life or being a sexual predator because their life lost value the moment they devalued an innocent life and stole something sacred from another person. There are no words for the level of dehumanization I would gladly put onto a creature who would do any of that to a child children, no matter who they grow up to be, are innocent. That's my stance on the dark issues going around this community lately, and it's getting way out of hand in my opinion. And if you're a person who has a platform calling out behaviors of a low cow, but making excuses for something as heinous as predatory behavior towards a child, you have some serious soul searching to do. The takeaway here is there's a difference between being an ass and being dangerous. We all like being petty, roasting, clowning, calling out the BS choices people make while filming themselves, then for some reason feel compelled to post it publicly. Hell, sometimes I can even understand some low blows. But cross these hard societal moral boundaries over not liking someone, valid or not, is not just being a troll or a funny asshole commentary channel, it's dangerous. Thank you guys for sticking around if you made it this far. I truly hope you did. I'm not interested in any back and forth tit for tat with anyone. That's not the point of this video. But I'm open to a conversation if you see things differently. I never have to say this because you guys are awesome and almost always do, but in this case, due to the sensitive subjects discussed, I just want to say please keep it respectful in everyone's comments, not just mine. These are trigger topics to say the least. I try to take a balanced approach to life and I rarely take myself seriously. I don't think too much of this information and my views on these subjects will come as a surprise to the majority of you who watch me on a regular basis, but sometimes it's important to speak up when you see something this dark infecting your community even if your voice is as small as mine. Anyway, thank you for watching, much love, keep clowning, and I'm headed back to working on our regularly scheduled, more lighthearted program. If you want to talk to crime, religion, politics, let me know. I'll create another channel where we can have that conversation. Outside of video games and girl world, those topics are a huge part of my day-to-day -day conversations with other people. Thanks again. Jade signing out. Take care of yourselves.